Welcome back to another lunchtime of Adobe Live with our UK creatives. We're starting with some really strong connection today. <laughs> so a little bit rocky, but we're here. <laughs> and I hope you're doing well if you're joining again or as a regular mm -hmm. um, in this little creative hub of uh, Adobe Live on Behance. Or if you're on YouTube, come along and join on Behance so we can have a chat. And welcome to Rufus, my co-host again. And of course, Yukai, who's joining us from the UK based in London. Hi. We're really excited to see your work today. And you'll be covering Photoshop, anime, After Effects. So there's something for everyone, right? Wow. I know this is the gift world that, you know, you guys are going to be sharing and I'm really excited. Um, <laughs> how's everyone doing? What a program. Exactly. There's so many people <laughs> in the chat already. So like Emma Hi, mentioned, everyone. The, chat, the chat action is here on behance.net slash live. So hop on over if you're watching this on YouTube. And... Uh, and also, um, we also have a, a Discord community going on around this Adobe Live from the sofa with UK artists. So maybe Tim can put in the link in the chat right now. And uh, yeah, feel free to join us there. I've seen some people asking, oh, can you look at my work? Can you look at my portfolio? I need advice. Uh, putting that on the, um, on the Discord is a very good idea. I think we even have a special place for it on Discord, um, which is called, yeah, like works, like showing the work. So hey, Yukai and hey, Emma. So great to have you both here. <laughs> Hi, thank you for having me. And Yukai, let's start with a little bit about your background. I know you already have something to share and um, you'll be talking a bit more about your portfolio um, yeah. to start with. Um, you've worked with some really prestigious you know, organizations. I know Ted being one of them. So I'm really excited yeah. to see what um, you'll bring on. But go ahead, introduce yourself. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Yukai. Uh, I am from China and then I moved to London about eight years ago uh, and studied in Central St. Martins. And I graduated in London and then since then I just started to work as illustrator and animator here in London. Um, I can share a bit my work on my website. So you can, you can see like my work has like consistent style and I like to use a lot of colors and patterns and both my illustration and animation, they kind of similar. So I quite, I quite often like think about the movements of my illustration, but also um, the, the composition of like like the other way around because these two subjects is like so connected to me uh, so you can see here but um actually before i moved to london i had a very different style like it's nothing like this right now so today i really like to share like how i develop my work and how i combine different programs to make my work different from other works like to have my own style with, with a combination of photoshop animate and after that brilliant and uh yukai if i'm not wrong you have a background in chinese painting um and you know you have a whole story about how you got into you know um this illustration yeah. style and yeah. your identity can you tell us a bit more about that because i find it really interesting yeah i do like when i was a kid i actually started to draw Chinese painting and then I went to uh, fine art school so a lot of my old work I can show a bit here is actually based on paper and like naturally I would just like to draw with textures and a lot of brush strokes um, and then I actually started I studied animation in China so uh, as you can see, like some of my work has like like animated illustration, and the style is very different from what I'm doing now. But then, like since I moved to London, I just wanted to move away so much from my culture. Um, like I want to be westernized. I want to be modern. I want to be different. So this is actually some of the sketch I did when I just moved to London to Central Saint Martin. And as you can see, I try different materials and try to experience like what uh, what can I use for patterns and how can I look like, you know, so different from uh, before. 
but then after a while i just like realized like there's actually there is a way like i can bring back those tangible elements digitally so and that's how i i really like use a lot of photoshop at the time and i try brush i come i actually scan in my sketches and then i use photoshop brushes and try different patterns and colors and then i also animate in at the time it was fresh like i just did frame, frame by frame and then now it's animate um and then i try what what was because there is a fine balance of illustration and animation if if you experience in both areas they're always like a style you find it too complicated to animate or there's always another animation style you find it too simple to show it as a still frame so that's that's pretty much what i was trying to explore when i when i just moved to london and there's quite a few failed tests so don't don't be afraid to get failed or you know and then eventually uh this was kind of self style i was settled on it was um it was my first short film it's called way out uh it's because you can find it on my website and you can watch the whole film uh so it's it, that's that's the first time i started to learn oh there are actually many many ways to tell a story and it's not just like a, a photoshop draw one frame or or after effect make the whole thing it's actually a combination of so many layers and then at the end you bring them together and then that makes who, who am I? Who you are? You know? um, but back to the Chinese background. Like recently, I really I thought about it. Like since I've been here, and I just really like to bring back my culture and what I experienced when a little kid. So because I've already like have some sort of um, portfolio set up, so I just based on what I have now, I started to think back. Like what can I do with? You know, like the fine lines I learned when I was a little kid, Chinese paintings, and then different how I draw rocks or yeah. Um, and actually, it's really interesting you you mentioned this project because someone in the chat was already googling your Behance <laughs> and wanting to check it out. So, yeah, and so I also want to say that oh, we have yeah. Jing from last week, uh, a lovely Jing who is here um, working through her magic uh, super fast. And we were so impressed. And she's here in the chat. She's a friend of yours. And she's yeah. doing our job. She's been replying to people <laughs> and helping them out <laughs> and um, sending you Behance and promoting you. So Jing, <laughs> thanks for joining <laughs> and um, taking that on for us. This is great. <laughs> we also have friends and family. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, tell us a bit more about this project. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so it's really like some of the locations I really like about in China, like it's because I'm from a big city, it's Guangzhou. And then, but I always fascinated by like the Asian towns in China, like like the buildings. And it's just what reminds me that is actually what I see in Europe. Like everything is so preserved. You can see the street. The house we are living now was built 100, 200 years ago. And then all these elements together reminds me like, wow, like that's, that's so like special. Like it's something so we need to remember, you know, the buildings there. You can see the history and life. And, you know, that's why I, I started this personal project and just to like study like different buildings, towns in China, in different regions. I, I'm sure a lot of Chinese people can recognize like different areas and yeah, I, I, it, will, it will continue. It's the ongoing project. Yeah. I love that connecting to your roots and we have some questions already um, and some yeah. of them you touched on um, regarding your graduation and oh. move to London. So you mentioned that you're a St. Martin's graduate um, and we have someone from the chat asking if what you actually studied and um your experience uh, there i study and um i actually started my first year in communication design but i just realized i still really want to go further on animation so i actually switched to animation uh character animation to be precise brilliant and jing was already on it anyway she's like throwing <laughs> your cv out there um, so we all know um, but it was great to hear from you as well 
Um, and we also had a question about your move to London. So you, uh, from Jackie, who's asking when you moved, um, and uh, if you mentioned it already, but just to reiterate, when you actually yes. moved. Yes. Uh, when I moved, it's 2012. The year they hosted Olympics in London. <laughs> I remember nice. so What a well. start. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's really funny. That's the year I, I did a, a course in St. Martin's as well. So I arrived uh, pretty much at the same time. I was also around there. Um, I remember oh, the Olympics oh, being oh, on. Oh, yeah, it's brilliant. brilliant. Um, but yeah, great. Great to hear. And how did you find the creative community when you joined? What kind of appeals in terms of being in London? Uh, yeah, I think, that's, I think that's the reason I stay. I'm still here. Like, it's just so amazing. Like, the... I, I can talk to someone I really admired when I was in China already. Like, it's just so many inspiration and then everyone's so connected. And it's, we, I have the studio share. I can't go now, but it's it's just I have a studio share with uh, four of my friends. And then we just, we all different. None of them are illustrator or animator, but we always bounce ideas back and forth. And we have similar, like, ins we inspire each other. And same, same for other people here. And there's so many great events and and galleries or or you know exhibitions. It's it's just like there's no way back. Like I just can't see myself back in China because it's just different different community. I, I wish I could bring back more there, but it's just you know yeah, it's a privilege. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Even in the situation right now, um, there's some ways to connect yeah. to the community as well, right? And yeah. uh, we're already, already seeing in the chat that, um, you know, this also means you were able to change your style and you've seen it evolve. Um, we have Richard who's saying, I really like the flat colors in the recent work, but also love the textures and hand-drawn feel of oh. the early pieces. Um, so we can really see that kind of ink and paper experience you have from, you know, your Chinese yeah. drawing and all yeah. the way to the animations that you do now. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Shall we carry on a bit more? <laughs> yeah, I just like, because this can show some of my gifts. Uh, it's just really like to achieve one unique look is just not like a simple thing. Like for me, it was a lot of study, like what can I do in this program and then bring back to each different programs and then finally put them together like a nice uh, unified piece. So that would bring what I want to share with you guys today is um, I would like to share my process, like how I'm making gear from by uh, using Photoshop, Animator, and After Effects. Um, so I can share my Cintiq. Jumping into the Cintiq. <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, I use Cintiq from... Yeah. <laughs> I love this little guy here because it can replace a keyboard. I have my own uh, shortcut settings, so I can just use this thing to move my canvas around and do all the little tricks. Uh, so today I would like to show you how I do like a hand gift. Um, maybe some of you know I have a thing with hands. I love drawing hands. Um, so that this is sketch. You can see my screen, right? Yep, all good. And we already have some questions about which um, apps you use um, from James, who is asking if you animate in Character Animator or After Effects. So stay tuned. We're starting with Photoshop and working our way through. So you guys well, is going to share a little bit show more. You today. Yeah, don't yeah. worry. Don't <laughs> worry. Yep, It'll come. Yep. <laughs> yep. Oh. Someone's running ahead. <laughs> yeah. So I, as you can see, I got a sketch ready here already. Um, and then the, I would just go really rough today because uh, I know I'm going to be refining in later on in the animation process. So I don't fussy about you know making it pretty, but of course sometimes if you need to show the client like oh this is a steel frame how it's going to look like, I I would just make it prettier. Um, so this is the brush I use for information. Um, and then I just go really, really rough to to draw the hand. And did, did you do that sketch digitally or um, on paper and scanned it in? Or uh, I I used to do it in paper actually, um, but since the Cintiq and iPad, I just move it digitally because it's just way easier uh, 
to go to the next step. But I used to have a light box and then I would just draw it on the light box. And then another layer and then another layer until I really get a refined sketch and then I scan it. But technology help us, you know, like, um, and then we'll just use paint bucket. Um, we even have people from Malaysia joining in. This is great. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, Lily. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, guys. Um, for me, it's like, it's really, in Photoshop, it really gives you the freedom to, like, play with texture and then color combination. And, like, I can, I normally do the design in Photoshop because I can just see how the color would look like. So if you have experience in animation, I just really recommend don't think about anything about animation right now. Like you just think about, oh, if the color looks good or if the hand is have a good uh, position uh, in the canvas. And, and then because of time today, I did the background. I kind of did background already. So you can see the whole picture, see, oh, this, this is kind of look I am going for, but because there's a perfect tool in After that you can just do a perfect circle or perfect uh, uh, triangle. So you don't really, I don't normally go into too much details in Photoshop. And then you can see the kind of hands. So you just need to make sure everything's there. Like I want nails on the hands or I want some little lines. And then next step, I will just apply the patterns. Um, I do have like a pattern library. It's very handy for if you work in patterns or textures. Uh, if I have some downtime, I will just uh, build up my library. I do have like a pattern. Um, I have more than two actually, <laughs> but today I'm just going to show you two. Um, and while you're doing that, uh, do, do you sell prints of your work or do you yeah, have? I do. I do. If you go to my website, there's a shop link, and then you will see a lot of prints there. And the Chinese uh, print I mentioned earlier is also there. All right, awesome. Um, I will go there right away. <laughs> <laughs> So Stay with that surface. <laughs> and that's also a very good thing also for the community is that like also think about, you know, like an online store for selling prints and things like you can actually. Uh, yeah, demand especially now, I think yeah. it helps a lot with my business. For example, like um, I can't go to market, sell my prints and then I just do it online and people all around the world can buy it. Love it. And we'll share a link as well to your website if we can uh, in the chat. Tim is, of course, here always. Um, so when Jing is not on it, <laughs> we'll have Tim <laughs> <laughs> sharing some info in the chat. It's there you live, go. Live chat host. Live chat host. <laughs> exactly. Um, we, we have co-hosts in the chat as well now. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> the photo I is ready. Like, this is, like, what I would stop there. And I would name everything properly because... I would just drag this in my optic bag. So for the hand animation, I normally film myself as reference. Um, so today is just the hand uh, because when I went when I went to uni, they actually performing classes. Like we have like classes to sit down with like act, actor acting students, and then they show us how to perform your own characters. And then always funny things in an animation, you always need to exaggerate. Like overacting, it would be perfect for animation. So I did my little hand recording with just with my phone. It's very easy. So I like the hand movement going to be a bit like this, like this. but I repeat a few times because I just want to capture the best moment. And once you have that, I would just go to my earthquake bed. And I just put it on a timeline and then I place it 
like in the middle like i sh and then this is the perfect time to bring in my design because i just i can see where i would like to place and then the position you know how it looks good in the image you can see everything is layered like exactly the way it is in photoshop and that's what i love about adobe it's not advertisement it's just like i really like this feature like it's so good and everything is so logically layered and i can just what it's the same logic of the program so i can just move things easily and then with the hand i can just it's roughly the same position and then I just play around the timeline. As you can see, it's moving now because that that would be my timing reference. So with this timing reference, I would just keep it there, and I would turn off my hand and shapes, and and I would do a little render here, and then this would be my animate reference. So the good thing is separate programs is like Photoshop is purely for colors, combination, everything. And then after effect is like a mom, she's taking care of everything, but then she doesn't go micromanaging. Like, I don't care what you do over there. You just come back here. That's fine. And then that's for animate. And I can really go crazy with my animation. So that's why I need a guide. So the mom is giving a guide to me to like the timing, how it would work here. And now I need to go back to my Fintech. So you, I have Photoshop see here, but then I can switch to animate. I normally go just the most common one, but make sure you have exactly the same settings in After Effects. Um, but it helps you to import your video on the timeline here, um, import, import video, and make sure your render is H.264 because it would just uh, go straight on the timeline. Um, so I call it hand with timing reference. A little trick I would do in After Effects is I will also re time, time remapping my hand movements as well. So it gives a bit this dramatic movement it goes a bit quicker on the move and stop there and then go, it moves quicker back. So it, in animation, it, it worked really well. So now you see the timeline. Um, I'm, I, I'm not, I don't have time to show you every step in anime because I normally do frame by frame animation in anime. It would take a lot of time. But what I like about it is just I know some people animate style in Photoshop as well, but what I like about anime is it's just um, it's very simple. And then the onion skin was so well. So you can see the video is here now. And then I would just rename it like a reference layer. And with, uh, with anime, you can just go straight in and then draw and you don't need to worry about style or anything because in Photoshop, the same problem I had before is I worry too much about the style, the brush, and it just is not necessary because After Effects can do it. Why you just worry about someone else's problem, right? So you need to be very clear-minded, like what program you're using and what what what's your what's the step you're doing now, and then later on you can go back and fix it or or combine everything together. So we can see this. Frame. And then I would just lay out keyframes so you can see the whole timeline here, which is really great. So I kind of would end it up in the hand like this. And that's that's a good stop frame. And also because fresh is um sorry, animate. I still can't change. I always call it fresh. Um because animate is there's a paint bucket you can just fill the color there's no gap because in photoshop it's not vector it's pixel so when you paint bucket your elements if there's a little white gap which you need to fix it you need to spend time to fix it um 
and that that's also another reason I use anime. And that's how I and then I would just add in betweens in the middle. So I can show you what I've done. So as you can see, I have the videos there. And then I will start with keyframe it. It just go really wild. I just need my hand performance to be the solid shape, but the middle frames, I can just be crazy and creative about the movements. And then when I have the keyframe ready, I will turn off the video. I don't need that anymore because I got my base and then I would just uh, sketch all the keyframes. And there's a really good function here in anime is I can only see a line frame of the previous layer. So I can compare. The famous so this, onion skin. <laughs> yeah, I love onion skin. Um, so with onion skin, I can just go with the movements and then I tweak it like different layers. So you can see between the two layers it's actually the movements okay and i don't need to worry about i use green it's just for my eyes i don't like to see too much red on the screen or too bright and so i can use whatever color i like because at the end i would just change it in after that so after the sketch is and normally at this stage i would bring this back in after that to check if the timing is okay but then today i will just skip that's that because um, it just went hour slot. Uh, but then after that, I would just refine my my line drawing. So you can see, I, I still change here because when after that's after the sketch, I actually I body back to after that and then I find it is too much on the left side. So I just kind of when I bring that here, I when I refine the animation, I just try to move a bit towards the center and I also add some detail so you can see a replay. It's, it's still the same, but it's slightly different. And then that's the fun part is remember in Photoshop, the design always check with your design what's missing because this is your design guide so i have a shading i have the nails i have this little lines so here is the analyze mode like what can be done in after Effects and what can be done in animate for so the patterns i can do it in after Effects, but the shading is there's no lazy way to do it so i would just go back to animate and then we'll add the shading as well So here is shading. It's also frame by frame. And then the nails. And you may question like, oh, it doesn't loop. But I kind of not want it to loop back. And there is a time reverse in after like that. So I also don't need to worry about it here. I just make sure one movement is good enough. And then I can edit in after like that. And so cool. I think that's it for animate and it's and another really good thing is in animate. Um, you see it's a bit outside the box here, right? Um, in Photoshop, it's quite hard to reframe it. But in animate, you can just go modify and document before you render. You can just match content. So everything's in the frame now and it's exactly the good size, right size. But that's after you finish everything because you don't want to, you still want to see the composition for your final work. And with this, you can also, it's because it's perfectly cut to edge. So it's also make your after that life much easier. And I would just render it like frame by frame, no layer by layer because, sorry, not frame by frame, that would be crazy. Uh, I just do it layer by layer because it will be easier to uh, composite them together if I go publish. Um, it's all compatible with After Effects, so you can just render like a fresh format, so it doesn't really matter. And I have them all actually render here. 
uh, it, I would name them like by layer orders. So the first layer is solid, and then second layer is details, and then the third layer layer is nails. Um, and now we can go back to after like that. And you can you're just running this show today. This is incredible. Like you're just oh, going for right. one app to <laughs> another. If you have a question, I, if you have a question, <laughs> let's throw it in. I, 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 Rufus and I just have to like sit back and watch, and actually, it's going to be <laughs> just Rufus. Just Rufus. Yeah, I'm going to be next... here with you, Yukai. Uh, has to jump off, so I I yeah. I'm going off to France. <laughs> I will be back tomorrow, Bye. guys. But we're leaving Bye. this little duo together, so um, I really want to find out more. But I'll tune in and watch and replay because you can, yeah. guys. So <laughs> see you on the French side for anyone who speaks French. We'll be there okay. in the next live. <laughs> Thanks, Yukai. Thank Bye. You. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, Animate is one of those applications that, you know, that got a little bit forgotten by the audiences in the past few years when it changed name. Yeah. When you thought, oh, yeah. Flash isn't there anymore. And uh, uh, so what is this Animate? Basically, it's just an evolution of, uh, of Flash. And, uh, and the cool thing is, though, that you can export in many different formats. And you know, just like Yukai is doing, um, like using it to create animations that can be used then in After Effects, or you can uh, also create HTML5 animations. It's actually a pretty neat software for creating animations. So those of you, I've seen many in the chat that are using Photoshop to do frame-by-frame -frame animation, go check out Animate because it's a really nice alternative as well. It also depends. I do have a lot of friends use animates as well, but it's really like to get the idea of like really for keyframe animation, it works really well. And it's always good to have see a line drawing first. And then you some people just bring it back in Photoshop and do refine the style and everything, which is also great too. Um, then I have hands here ready. So you can see it's perfectly matching and you know, I don't need to worry about any of these problems. And it's here, our little hand. And I will just pre-com it. So Jackie is asking, what would you need to export into a different program? Well, you could do ma many things directly in Animate, but of course, you know, in After Effects, you have another type of control that maybe, you know, that Yuka is looking for that you didn't find in Animate. Yeah, and then I will have this here. What I do, I just use change color to change everything. So I turn this off so you can see. Um, it's just like this before. Quite gross green hand. But then with change to color, it's just very linear. You can just pick a color. And again, you have your Photoshop here. And I will always, sometimes I would just bring back my Photoshop layer, and then I will put it next to each other so I can compare. So it would be just like, if you don't want to mess it up, you can also mark it like a guide layer. So it won't be rendered. You can just compare and see, oh, okay. And then what I normally do, since I draw, I was drawing in Animate, you can see the outline is really refined. And then I will use roughen edges. Maybe it's easier to just see this layer. So as you can see, it's like a perfect outline, that really vector look. And what I love about After Effects is it can go so close to a brush in Photoshop. So it's it's also experience as well. Like you can play with different effects to achieve the look you you design in Photoshop or uh, Illustrator. But eventually, they are they are a way. There must be a way can have can achieve the same look. Um, so I use roughen edges and then again you can compare with the style frame and then you can play around the scale if this is the brush scale you're looking for and or you can also change the complexity if you want to be more rougher with more little um, brush strokes like and then after this you can also um, you can apply to all the layers you need. 
So yeah, just I'm just answering a few questions in the chat. So Pinar, uh, is this Animate CC the same as Adobe Flash? Yes, it actually is. It's, we changed the name, and and um, uh, it's it's got a lot of things that Flash used to have, but a whole bunch of new things as well. And like Yukai just mentioned, one of the really interesting things in um, in uh, Animate is that you can actually paint in vectors. Uh, therefore, it is all resolution independent. And this is kind of important when you're moving in between formats and resolutions. And uh, uh, yeah, and like Steve Steve uh, Festus said, uh, yes, yeah, seems animate is a lot closer to traditional hand drawn animations than After Effects is. Yeah. Yeah, and I normally do it in tools. So, but then there's a way in After Effects I can make the the frame rates also like the two's frame rate rather than animate on ones. So it's like I all the process, the path I'm going is try to use digital to achieve a very craft hand draw look. But obviously there are other people like going the opposite way, like try to achieve a very neat uh, digital high tech look. So if there's different style. I, I think for me, the tools is I shouldn't say that the tools is not as important as the story you want to tell. So if you have something you want to do, just put it there and then don't worry about how you can achieve it because there is a way to achieve a look, but a story is unique. Like if you want to tell a story, you just find a style, you just have your way to tell it and then have your combination of all the colors and brush and everything you need. And then after that, you just study how I can crack it down and then make this, this look happen, make, make this become like a real thing. And that, that's from my experience, because I, I was worried too much about how I can make a hand draw or crafty look in, in dig digitally. And then I never make a start because I don't think it's achievable. I just feel like, oh, that's too much. Oh, no, that's it's hard. It's, it's this watercolor effect, you know, but then I find my way, is, is, which is amazing because I've been developing and changing and then defining my workflow and and that's what I'm showing you today like for my past experience but I'm sure there will be a better way and then I will keep exploring it but um, yeah I think it's, it's just a good starting point if you know what, what you want to do, focus on the, the topic and, and the story back to the main com as you can see the hands is finished um it's just something these things like the texture i normally use and i also have a texture library apart from the pattern library i have a texture library as well um so it's i and it, i actually paint hand hand draw them in photoshop so it's back to photoshop again you can see just from one application to the other. <laughs> I just wanted to say hi to some new people in in, in the chat, like Ariel and uh, hi. Judy, and um, uh, there's a lot to learn. Yes, so thank you for joining. And um, you. as you mentioned, all of these uh, Adobe Lives are, of course, uh, on uh, available as replays as soon as we're done. Uh, so you can watch the beginning of this stream if you've missed it. And uh, one other thing that I wanted to mention. Uh, since you're so many in the uh, watching the video right now, please join us on Discord. And Tim can put the uh, here we go. Tim just anticipated me and put the Discord link uh, <laughs> in the chat. Uh, basically, that's where we continue the conversation in between streams, and where you, as a community, can gather together and exchange ideas, ask questions, and also communicate with us, with me, with Emma, um, and uh, Tim. Uh, we're always there. So yeah. Welcome to Adobe Live from the sofa. And we're doing that every day from noon to 1 uh, UK time. So if you if this is the first time, join us tomorrow and the day after. And we're going to be here as long as, yes, as long as this weird time uh, <laughs> is around us, let's say. Back to you, Yukai. Yeah, I'm just uh, adding textures in and Again, I did a free frame texture in the Photoshop and then I can just, I use uh, loop, I just loop it in after that. So I don't need to do too much. Um, and then again, the hands, I would just go with the first. 
yeah, as you can see, because that no matter what problems you have or you you think it's not perfect, there is a way in After Effects you can matching and fix it, or you know. Of course, I in the ideal world, I would like to do everything hand paint or you know like like do everything properly and and don't need to fix anything, but. And there is when it comes to especially if there's a work if a job coming there's always deadline and there's you need to show client there's always feedback you want to achieve so you want to give yourself like you don't want to hand paint everything on paper something like this because if there's a feedback it's impossible to change so you want to be keep yourself flexible in after fat you know like you can just play with different elements you can move the shapes around and speak of shapes actually animate the shapes as well and Gareth, yes, you can import Illustrator into Animate as well, and that will yeah. also um, uh, retain the layers. Um, uh, and it, it works similar like in After Effects, yes. So all of these applications are really working together. And, exactly, um, yeah. yeah. So that's how it works. And Carrie is actually downloading Animate as she's writing, or he's writing. Um, yep, going to be dipping my toe into all of the Adobe apps at this rate. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, we're here. We're yes. here to inspire you and give you the, yes, give you this little spark to get you testing and, you know, trying new things because right now is the good time, I think. Yeah, I actually think since the lockdown, I found myself like creatively more doing more new things. Like I, I have time to like, think about, build, like for example, building up my pattern library or exploring some new color combination and started to draw more on paper again and then do this Chinese inspired project, and, which is it's great. I think it's time to do this kind of thing. And uh, so the shapes is like, well, like I said before in Photoshop, we don't need to draw the shape perfectly because there is a shape tool here. You can just draw perfect whatever shape you want to draw in it's like a illustrator so you can just draw the perfect shape which which is something again like you just think about what program works the best for you maybe i can draw shapes in illustrator and export import to photoshop and then animate you know you're like there's so many ways like it's like find your perfect perfect combination it's, it takes time it takes years but it, it at the end you just like oh that's that works so well for me like and then we bring it back here to the final. And um, what well, it's a little thing I normally do here is because in Flash, if you see the pink layers here, they are cell animation and they are on tools. And I and after effect, the things you in animate in after effect is actually very smooth. So the background shapes is kind of very, very smooth, like they are like 24 frames per second. So what I would do, I would just add an adjustment layer and then I would go to effects. There's a time, posturize time. Oh, I have here already. So I would change it. For this one, you can change the frame rate. You Sometimes you can animate the frame rate for the speed as well. So here I would just turn it to 12, but you put it under your, your cell animation. So it gives kind of a bit, it's very subtle, but it kind of gives a bit like a rough looking, like craft animation looking on your after effect animation. And also like roughen edges and all, all these little elements combined together. And and this is something that that's that's it. Like it's it's not like people can't tell, oh, this is all after effect, or oh, this is all Photoshop. It's it's you, you don't need to study like what, what this is done by what I think it's more like oh this is about the hand moving or you know I, I more see the whole thing as, as, as one rather than a separate uh, a separate uh, rather than like three different programs achieve one thing in the same goal so I, I just really like the combination and yeah that's it and at the end, I render with... Yeah, like, like Jing says, it's all about idea uh, rather than the tools. Yeah, yeah. Also, we are, well, or, although we are presenting the tools now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, I will use encoder uh, to do renders because now there's a function you can actually render GIF. 
and I find it pretty good. But sometimes the size might be a bit big and then you want to compress a little bit and then I would go back in Photoshop and then to, to just there's a function in Photoshop is to com uh, to render like a smaller size GIF and which I quite like too. So it's, it's really a lot of jumping back and forth. <laughs> and Jackie is asking you, uh, I'm confused at how you get the pattern in one place and still moving. Does a mask adapt to the content? Yeah, it's the mask. Uh, it's, uh, it's just I have my pattern library I showed you earlier. And the, the good trick is um, keep it in the full screen. You almost, if you have like a square format, uh, you keep it like square, like you draw your pattern on the full sheet. And then so when you bring it back to uh, After Effects, you can just really uh, like this one. And this, I know it's a bit boring. To, I, I actually hand draw. Sometimes I copy paste, but sometimes I hand draw or the whole sheet of patterns. Try, try to keep it unique. But um, once you have this, it's very handy in, in After Effects because you can, no matter what, where your animation moves to, it's always, uh, there are always patterns in there already. So it's shapes. So it's, as you can see, it's just like a shape layer without the mask. It's very subtle. It's like a dark blue. So with this, and then I would just always, I always finish at the pattern at the very end because you almost want this. This animation is quite simple, but if you have more complicated animation, you always want to lock the timing and everything. And then I would just duplicate the layer, and then I mask it. So you have the shape, you have the patterns there, and if if you want, you can parent. The shape layer with your animation so it kind of moves with the shape but it's i think it, i consider it as a part of my style as well i like to keep the pattern in place i like i prefer them not move so it's more like this and it's just so many little things you can do and explore like what i said before um yeah any more questions? I'm, I'm taking questions now. It's, it's yep. pretty much done. Okay. Yeah. So maybe you want to just show us like maybe your uh, process in going into media encoder and, you know, maybe the choices you make. Yeah, I will just uh, in, I think I render like in the coder is just like a, a quick time movie. And, uh, and then when I have the quick time movie ready, Photoshop can read QuickTime Movie now, which is amazing too. Um, so I would just drag it in my Photoshop. Take some time. And then you can see, I use Photoshop Timeline as well. Like you can see, oh, that's the animation here. Oh, great. And then you can change time frame. Uh, you can change frame rate. So I sometimes put, because for GIFs, you don't need that many frame rates. Sometimes you just want to compress and then be easy to load on your website. And I would just bring it down a little. And then if you want to resize it, you can just change the size. And I would normally do, for Instagram, I would just do 1080. Um, and then files, so this export and then save for web legacy. Um, which this is somewhere when I do GIFs, I always use Photoshop because there is um, quite a there's a preview windows and I can see and then I can read this, the size, how, how big it's going to be. And but for encoder, I, I used to because for some really big format animation. It's, it's better to use encoder to make a GIF first and then I would bring it back to Photoshop again. So it's a lot of back and forth like to make the best. I know like because a lot of people would like to see GIFs now, but it's such a complicated format. They wanted a good look quality, but they also want it to be a bit small. And so here you can just, you, as you can see, you can see the size and you can choose different quality. 
And then another thing is you can choose the colors. So for this one, it's quite simple. I can always reduce a bit the color. I can go one to eight or sometimes even 64. And then it really reduce, it reduce your, your uh, gift size a lot. Yes, because this was, this was one of the really cool things about um, the gift format is that, you know, you could actually choose the oh, number of colors okay. and you could actually yeah. also design in that number of colors at the very beginning. Um, yeah. I think Photoshop does a really great job at um, reducing those colors and, you know, making the uh, the file smaller. Oh, I think my Photoshop is... Yeah, I think it's, it's really good. Like the end result is like something... Uh, you you can always play with this is the result of one two eight. I actually don't have that many colors in this gif, and then actually one two eight looks looks like very close to two five six. So I I just sometimes play with like different different colors. That's mm -hmm. that will help to reduce the file size. Of course, the the size also matters. Like how many frames per second also matters. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Wow, this is really great um, stuff. Um, maybe it. what we can yeah. do now is that there's so many more. Oh, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> yes, of course. No, <laughs> I'm muted, of course. That makes sense. Uh, no, I do. <laughs> Thank you. <t> <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Yeah, okay. Um, and uh, maybe we can go back to your portfolio and maybe we, we show again a little bit of your work. Yeah. Uh, so, so I use your Sims. store. You know where where people can actually. Oh uh, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I have my offerings here. So this is my website and the front page. So use the same technique. I actually the technique I just show you. Uh, some of these works are, are exactly the same process. Mm -hmm. Like uh, you, I use Photoshop to design and then I bring them back in in after effects and like the one this for ted is like a lot of a uh, cell animation was done in animate and then i bring it back in um but at the end it's just really like achieve the look i want to i wanted to achieve and this is for lush as well and for the shop yeah i have uh, on my website there's a link to go to my shop uh, yeah, I just I'm selling uh, some uh, limited edition prints. Uh, they all they are all printed G clay, which is like a fine art print technique, um, and uh, the paper quality everything's really good. Um, and I sign I, I have quality control by myself, and I also that gives me a reason to go get out of the house, you know, yeah. like go to the post office and then get the print, uh, which is is, is a nice thing to do. Um, it, and it's the series you can check on. Actually, it's my latest Behance post. Uh, you will see it there. And um, for for who you, if you really want to build up, build up your portfolio, I I highly recommend Behance. And this is how I started. And this is how I, where I meet Jean. Actually, we met on Behance. We have like we really like each other's work, and then we started to become friends. And. So it's, is, yeah, really I remember. Great. I remember the and day. People would, when, obviously, people would just. Yeah, I, yeah I, sorry. I remember the day when uh, when Adobe announced that they were buying Behance. Yeah. I was so happy because um, this is something you know that was really missing in this whole creative cloud thing. Like, yeah. was, like this community, you know, like it's that the community uh, yeah. is around Behance and uh, yeah. and yes. So you know, many people think um, that you know that. Of course, Instagram is very important these days. If you have a good Instagram, like people find you for your work on Instagram as well. Yeah. But think of Behance as your curated uh, portfolio because that's really um, agencies and people who are looking for talent, uh, they're really using it. And um, if, if you go up and, and um, you guys doing that very nicely, like with a header, with a description, it's not just a matter of, putting images and photographs or whatever on Behance, but also to tell the story about those images and about, you know, how, what is this all about? Uh, because if I'm looking for talent, I also want to 
at first glance be able to read a little bit about the process uh, understand a little bit how how you're actually go going through things and thinking about things so it's super important to actually give descriptions to describe what you're doing and uh, and yes and then from behance you can export all of that to adobe portfolio which is also included in creative cloud and which make lets you make a port do, did you make it did you create a portfolio uk uh i i had it before but i just think behance is really good that mm -hmm. i don't need to do the portfolio again so oh, okay. like I, I actually have an example like this is this is a project i actually did to promote myself on instagram but people because people can only see one image per time on instagram and mm -hmm. it's also like a very small format mm -hmm. so on behance yeah. i kind of put everything together and give a bit of the background of the project like why i why i started this and then what's the idea behind it so i just they're all square format but i think behance is it's just a way to you can put up like a project rather than a single image, single post. Mm -hmm. And then which this would, this actually brought me back a lot of views and then people actually find me from Behance and then go to my Instagram again. And it's, it's just like a whole thing together, which, which is really good. This, this project is incredibly beautiful as well. Wow, oh, thank I love you. it. I love the shiny water. <laughs> <laughs> the refresh. Yeah, it's just like a study of water and you know, I was yeah, the refreshing and but it was it was for Instagram promotion, but and then I thought like oh I, I, I should turn it into a project. Mm -hmm. So something like a bigger scale. And do you curate your Instagram as well? Like do you like plan how to put the pictures in or like in threes or six? No, <laughs> you know, like... uh, no I don't <laughs> That's what I think. Sometimes Instagram is quite small. You can't show the details. I, I know people would just crop in details and to try to show a bit more. But for me, I just feel like I would rather show a bigger format on Behance and then I have the whole image on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And so people get all my website that you can see a higher rest. But um, yeah, I'm too lazy to do that kind of. <laughs> yeah. I spend time on Instagram, like promote my latest work because. If, if I have a sketch, I, I don't want to post on Behance because it's mm -hmm. Behance is not for like a single, you know, idea sketch yeah. thing. But for Instagram, it's, it's if I was saying I would think it's different thing, like different platform. Mm. And one one last question, um, yeah. maybe a couple of last questions. Uh, <laughs> how much how long does it typically take you from, you know, like this project that you were showing today? Uh, of course, you know, it doesn't take you one hour, but, you know, like, how, no, how, do you, how, how long do you spend on one of those uh, animations? Um, I think it depends how clear you have your idea. So it's, if I know what exactly I want to do, and from beginning to end, it's just a few days I can finish really fast. Mm -hmm. But if, if I struggle, like, I, if I don't want the hands look like this, or if I'm not happy, you know, you always have this kind of creative blocks, like you, you just can't get it through and that you, I would just spend longer. But um, I normally, I can show you my sketchbook. It's nothing yep. pretty, it's very ugly. So this is how I normally do my sketch. Mm -hmm. It's nothing anyone else can understand, but I think <laughs> it helps you to, to gather ideas together. Like I, I really like the touch of paper. So I have this sketchbook really handy. So when I sometimes if I'm on the bus, I would just ask uh, some ideas um, for people. Yeah, I just uh, try to remember what I think about the compositions, hmm. and then I and then I sometimes just take a photo and then go go to Photoshop and make it be better. But it's 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 a good trick. Like you you don't you don't need to always be on social media ready. You know, you just Sometimes you can just be yourself, like just draw it. Like, don't don't worry about fail or being ugly or or rough, because it's it's the it's just the idea where it comes from. And, so and the hour is is over. <laughs> you, oh, but maybe yeah. one last thing. You know, you you mentioned yeah. about you know the creative block and that um, and that you uh, um, that sometimes you have this creative block. Uh, what what is your tip for our community to get over a creative block what what does yukai do 
had to. Um, well, that wasn't, that just yeah. came out like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, for me, because I would just stay away from that project if I can't think it through. Like, I would just do something else or I would draw something else. And, and it's, it's always like, and then one day you suffer me, probably in the middle of the night, it's just like, hey, I can do it in that way. You know, it's, it's, I do have an example, like I was working for MTV and then they gave me 15 seconds to animate about anxious. And then I have only 15 seconds to tell a story. And I was like, really, oh, what should I say 15 seconds? Uh -huh. And then I have so many different sketches about what I want to do and is this a person she's anxious and then she's hiding under bed or is I did so many things about it but at the end I just come up like a very simple idea like it was literally first thing in the morning and then I suddenly think oh maybe I can do something like this like just a phone call and and it doesn't be, need to be very complicated and off oh, internet Yeah, don't worry about it. I mean, it, uh, pe people yeah. can watch it on uh, on your on your webs on B on your Behance, yeah, right? Yeah, on the Behance is there, and I just and all these ideas just started from my my sketchbook like this. Like it, I just wrote down a lot of uh, ideas, and then even the stupid ideas just throw it there and then leave it. If mm -hmm. you feel you don't know where to go, just close your book and don't think about it. And, and then get back to it. Well, Yukai, thank you so much for you know sharing yeah. your workflow and uh, talk, giving us this inspiration today. And thank you all, over a thousand watching the stream right now. So thank, thank you. you all. Thank you everyone. The Adobe Live from the sofa. We're here every day and we're gonna be back tomorrow at from noon to one UK time uh, together with Emma and some wonderful guests. And don't uh, don't forget that in between streams, you can stay in touch with us uh, on Discord and uh, maybe Tim can put uh, the link to the Discord in the chat again um, so that we can continue this conversation. And maybe maybe UK, you can join us on Discord as well. And I'll yeah. promote as well. I, I'm already there actually. Oh, you already I'm hidden. Yeah, I'm big hidden. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So I'll find you and I'll promote you. I'll actually yeah. put the Adobe okay. Live guest on your oh. uh, on your profile. Yeah. So thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank, thank you. you thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Here, thank but you uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Bye. Bye.